Good afternoon, all. I'm so excited to be here to introduce Donald Payne, a longtime congressman from the Newark area and a senior member of the House Education and Workforce Committee. Um, he's a real friend of our work with youth. At my agency, the AIDS Resource Foundation for Children in Newark, New Jersey, we truly do count him as a supporter and a friend, and his office was instrumental when we led some youth, uh, 16 youth here to the Capitol from Newark last year. So um, on behalf of the children of ARFC St. Clair's, Faye and Terry Zeeland, our executive directors, I introduce Donald Payne. Thank you. Thank you very much, Regina, for a very kind introduction. And it's always great to see Norkers and New Jerseyites and, of course, people particularly from 10th District, New Jersey. It's me. So <laughs> tell your parents. Uh, and uh, welcome to all of you on this uh, wonderful uh, program, the National Summer Learning Association. And, um, I'm pleased to be here. Sorry to interrupt uh, the panel, but I, we have votes, and I know you have the heavy hitters come if they get here. Those senators, you know, they're they're big. I'm just we little house members, you know, <laughs> like the house mouse. You ever read that book when you were a little child? Uh, I guess it's mice, though. It's more than one. Uh, anyway, I understand that Senator Murray from the state of Washington, wonderful senator, and Senator Luger, who has done so many great things to out his long career. He uh, was very instrumental even back in uh, international affairs. Much of the detente between the U.S. and the Soviet Union was because of his work reducing nuclear weapons. And then really something that was very close to me was that he cast the deciding vote to have the U.S. impose sanctions on the apartheid government in South Africa back in the mid-80s, uh, he went against his party and President Reagan and Margaret Thatcher, but he thought it was the right thing to do. So it took a lot of courage. So I have a lot of respect for Senator Luger. He's a good Republican. Uh, let me uh, just say that it's great to be here and certainly uh, very interested in what I've learned about the uh, National Summit for Learning Association. The work that you do is certainly very important and I know there are a couple of um, uh, at least one other Nork uh, group maybe two I know the Boys and Girls Club Norsk and Burles, Boys and Girls Clubs here from Newark on oh, their supposed to be I'm on the board so I'm gonna check them out <laughs> the American campus uh, and uh, but all of you who are involved in this program uh, I couldn't think of anything more timely and more important I happen to be a member of the education and Labor Committee of the House of Representatives. And so uh, we oversee elementary, secondary, and higher education. I'd also like to see, but I'm not sure what'll happen with the new group, but I'd like to see early childhood included in, rather than simply elementary, secondary, and higher ed, I think we need to do the pre-K because that's, I think, the most important in our educational system. And I'd like to say that Bob Sidel, uh, Sidel has uh, done an outstanding job. I'd like to commend uh, Matthew uh, Boulay, the CEO, who has done an outstanding job uh, bringing this organization together. And uh, we had the AIDS Resource Foundation from Newark, as you heard from Regina. And um, uh, I also see uh, one of the former superintendents of the city of Newark and, and Roselle, uh, Mr. Webster, Superintendent Webster, where are you back? There he goes. All right, good to see you here. Stand up and did an outstanding job in the city of Newark and is a real uh, consummate educator. So let me just say that, uh, as we all know, that the National Learning uh, Day, one week away from this briefing today, uh, certainly affirms the fact that while our school years end, learning never stops. And we found them, a former teacher taught at uh, Southside High School in Newark, right after college, is now Malcolm X Shabazz High School. It's the top girls basketball team in the nation. Um, and many of them go to Rutgers, so they're getting a good public education because they wouldn't be able to get into Rutgers because Rutgers graduates more football players than any other college in their sort of Ivy League-ish. So I'm not in my, Newark Rutgers is in my district, so I'm very bullish on New Jersey, you know, don't, don't tread on us, you know. 
Um, little state, little piece of leather, but we're well put together. Uh, and so it's uh, really good to, uh, like I said, to see all of you here. And uh, we know that uh, research indicates that uh, there is a uh, learning needs to continue and learning opportunities reinforce and complement the standing curriculum. Most students will fall victim to what we call, as you know, the summer learning loss. And I did really encounter that when I was a teacher for over 10 years. Uh, students not engaged in summer programs, as we all know, typically fall behind. And um, the uh, statistics show that they typically fall, and you might have heard it already, more than two months behind in math over the summer. And low-income children f fall behind two to three months in reading. By the end of the fifth grade, lower-income children can be nearly three years behind their higher-income peers in reading, and you know, reading is fundamental. If you can't read, you're gonna have a hard time comprehending uh, word problems in math and just education in general. And so uh, this provides compelling evidence uh, towards the fact that summer learning programs play a real vital role in improving educational outcomes for our nation's youth. And we know we have to really improve our educational outcomes. As you know, we're falling into the teens and lower teens and 20s as we uh, compare ourselves to countries around the world, whether it's in math, whether it's in reading, whether it's in science. And so I heard the president, I haven't gotten the details, but he has a goal of, of creating a certain number of engineers uh, in the next 10 years. As you know, President Obama has done an outstanding job in strengthening, attempting to strengthen the community colleges, has a real goal of uh, increasing education. As you may know, our Pell Grants uh, under the Democratic rule and Mr. Miller not in control anymore, but we have, uh, with the cooperation of the Obama administration, have raised Pell Grants. As you know, it's up to about $5,500 to go up to $6,200. Uh, the last of the big grants left, but the new Congress said we have a debt problem, and therefore they're going to attempt to reverse it and start dropping it back to 52 and down to 49. So we have to really get advocates for the future of our nation. Education is something that we can't tinker with. We have to improve it. And if we're going to have policies that are going to weaken it, we can almost guarantee that we will not necessarily be ahead of the curve as it relates to international competition. So, uh, you know, we know that we have a debt that's looming. We have uh, trillions of dollars to pay down. But we can't sacrifice the last thing we have going. And this is what makes this country so great. That's why everyone from around the world wants to come to U.S. universities. They want to go to Harvard and Yale. They want to go to Rutgers. They want to go to my alma mater, Seton Hall. Hand for Seton Hall. Uh, all right. And, um, and, and so that's, that's still the case. I mean, they want to come here for higher education. Now there's a disconnect. They don't want to come here for elementary. They don't want to come here for high school. Therefore, that's where we have to concentrate, and we can't let the deficit or the debt compromise our educational system. And we have to learn what's not working in our public school system. I think the new experiences are there, and as you're saved because I, I'm, I hear the beeper going off. That means uh, I'll cut my three-hour speech to about another three or four minutes. I really wasn't going to do three hours, but, um, but it's good to have such an uh, audience like this. You know, when I go to my district, I said, I want to say, boo, sit down. You haven't done anything. Get the bum out of here. So this is great. You know, I love this. I could stay here all day. It really leaves me encouraged to stay and fight for my position, which I would anyway. But... Uh, the, uh, so we, we know that we have uh, information that's compelling. We know that programs play a vital role. Uh, in conclusion, this understanding uh, is supported by a portion of the TIME Act. I've introduced the bill last year. I reintroduced it this year called the TIME Act. Of course, the TIME Act would expand uh, school hours to provide more in-depth and rigorous learning opportunities in core subjects, as well as enrichment activities that contribute to a well-rounded education, including music and art, physical education, service learning, and experimental and work-based learning opportunities that they had when I went to high school and elementary school, which, as you know, have been taken out, time put for testing, uh, cut in budgets, can't buy instruments have to do away with somebody, so the music teacher goes, the phys ed teacher goes, art teacher goes, and so we're not getting a complete 
education. Even back in Socrates' days, you know, the thinkers, you know, that was a good job. I see these guys in Greece and Rome with just their hand on their chin. They were thinkers, you know. But they knew that you needed a complete education. So I just like to, uh, the purpose of the legislation is certainly to address the diverse academic needs and interests of students and modernize public schools to help develop the 21st century learning skills and prepare all students for lifelong success. Well implemented, extended uh, learning time initiatives, which include learning opportunities during summer months, can provide all students in a school with the time, instruction, and structure necessary to achieve academic success. In addition, the legislation, I'm honored to serve as the honorary host for the Summer Learning Fair in my district, which will be held on Monday, where we will have 25 different summer learning programs. We're going to give out books. We're going to promote the importance of summer learning, and we're going to encourage them to go. So I really appreciate what you've done. This event uh, will join the ranks of events around the country as part of the National Summer Learning Day to highlight the many facts that will be discussed, as you have already been discussing, and we'll do in a minute or two when I get out of here, which you probably said, when is he going to finish? But I'm finished. Today, uh, I really certainly would like to, we, this year we'll be discussing the role of summer learning programs in advancing academic growth, supporting working families, keeping children safe, and sending students back to school ready to learn. Our challenge today is not only to engage in dialogue, but to act on what is discussed here. And that's the big thing. We have great discussions. We have tremendous people who come with their expertise. The big thing then we have to do is, as public policy people is to take what you have suggested and implement it into action. So I look forward to working very closely with you and I appreciate the opportunity to have a f some words with you. I won't say a few, but some words with you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.